welcome to Connections Radio Show, where we talk about ideas that matter. I'm Lori Fitz, your host of Connections Radio, and on our show, we explore topics that get us thinking and talking, discovering the connections to ourselves, the people in our world, our community, and the world around us. You know, if you're listening to talk radio, my hunch is you really like a good conversation. I do too. But what makes up a good conversation? How would you define conversation? Is it a lost art? Do we talk at each other more these days? You know, are we talking about what we're doing, but not who we are, not what we're thinking about? You know, sometimes I think technology has been great. It connects us, but in other ways it disconnects us. It gives us kind of an excuse not to really be vulnerable with each other. We can share on Facebook, but that can be very topical, and it's not as deep felt, you know, when you're in the moment with someone. So today, we're going to be talking about conversation and skills. There are skills that we can learn to really have a very meaningful and important conversation. And we're going to be talking with our dear friend, Tom Glazier, uh-huh. who's been a host on our show. And today, we're, we're making him be the guest in the full feature of the show because he has so many wonderful things to say. On the other side of the mic. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and, and your book is so wonderful. And I think oh, every time I go back to it and, and in preparing for the interview, I went back to your workbook. There's new things I learned. And I think that just shows the richness of your perspective and the work that you've gone into it. Thank you. Of course, I'm smiling with this huge beaming (laughs) glow as you say that. Thank Uh, you, Lord. Well, we're glad you're here. And I want to invite our audience to join the conversation. You can call us with questions or comments. Our number is 952-946-6205. I'm going to give that again, 952-946-6205. And something to be thinking about, and if you want to ask this or or tell us in in conversation, what do you think makes a good conversation? You know, we've all had a moment where it just seems to glow the moment because you've really connected and you've had a really meaningful conversation. If you'd like to share what happened or describing that good conversation for us, we'd really love to hear from you. So one more time, the number is 952 946 6205. So you've been working on happiness for quite some time, but yeah. you've got a new thrust going that yeah. I, I see as a, a jumping off, but it, it's still deeply connected to the work that you did on happiness. Yeah. So tell me about yeah. what you're doing. That's right. So my uh, hope, my wish, my aim, my goal uh, was to inspire people to have deeper conversations because that's what I learned in studying happiness. People are the most happy when they're connecting with Mm -hmm. themselves and with other people. And how do we do that? It's through communication. Sure. Right. It's how we get everything done. So go have a cup of coffee and have a conversation. But it's not that easy, is it? It's not that easy. So so what I realized is I was at the beginning just Mm -hmm. telling people, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go out and connect with people. Go have conversations. And I realized it wasn't enough, Lori Beth. Yeah. To just say, people would look at me with this kind of blank, (laughs) you know, look in their eyes. That stud like, and and what exactly are you asking me to do? And and, and part of that may be Minnesotan because, you know, we're sometimes, we want to do it right. Oh, yeah. And Mm -hmm. so uh, uh, how do I do that? What's the right way to do that? And am I doing it wrong? Well, if I'm going to do it wrong, I better not do it at all. And so it got me thinking about some of those questions you were posing just a Mm -hmm. minute ago. I have, we... If, if, if we're stumped when someone tells us to have a conversation, mm-hmm. have we really lost mm. the art? I don't think we have, mm-hmm. but, but I'm afraid that that's the direction we might be going. And so I realized if, if this is my idea to inspire people to have deeper conversations, I need to help them more. I need to sure. be more clear, more specific, and give them some ideas of how to do so. Be directive. Be yeah. directive. Yeah. People people want that people are, are comforted mm-hmm. and helped by that. And then it's and so it isn't really teaching folks much new, I don't think. It's reminding us or reminding people of what we already know. I think it's also a skill that if you get out of practice, that if you You know, it's like getting up in the morning and deciding you're going to do some exercise. Well, you know, it's not like we don't know how to exercise. But if we're not doing it, it may not flow as easily. It may not be as exciting, may not look forward to it as much. But once you're in the flow. 
amazing that you're saying it this way because just this week, and, and in general, this is yeah. m not just this week, but so often when I work with clients, you know, I'm a, I'm a psychologist, mm -hmm. it's about habit forming. This is what I, and, and just yesterday in particular, we were talking, I was talking with a client about who really wants to get back into exercise, mm -hmm. formerly really quite an athlete, mm -hmm. but has fallen off the wagon. <laughs> and... And I was like, it's just habit. Yeah. And, and I wonder if you fall off the wagon from conversation. Yeah. You get, you know, tied I into so. your 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 uh, cell phone, you know, calls, yeah. your smartphone yes. with your social media. Yes. And that it, it's an exercise that in really connecting with someone on a one-to-one -one, live in the moment that can be lost. Because maybe we, we don't do it as much. Maybe right. we, I mean, uh, and I'm the same way. If I have a free second... I tend to check my email because it's right yep. there. It's in my. Yep. If I'm in line at the bank, which happens rarely now because I use my phone for my banking most of the time, but every now and then I got to go into the bank if I'm in line. Oh, I'll use this time. Because we want to do something. Yes. We don't want to waste time because yes. we want to. And, and you have a blog on your website, and I encourage everyone to go to Tom's website. It's a, um, a beautiful fullheartliving.com. Right. And... In the blog, you really explore how are we being and how are we doing. And so often when we're asked, how are we, we go to the doing right yes. away. Well, I'm doing uh, this. I'm doing this radio show. I'm, yes. you know, getting ready to, you know, go work on the farm and do some yeah. chores. But, you know, is that who I am right now? Yeah. And, yeah. and I think you do a good job with it. Share with the audience some of the ways that you differentiate being and doing. Well, yeah, so – in the blog, I talk about being a child mm -hmm. in, in, in summers, right? And remembering hours, just I, I could lay on my back in the grass, staring up at the clouds mm. and watching the clouds. And not be worried. No. And not like, oh, I'm wasting time. No. Nope. <laughs> no. Nope. Or, or giving yourself, oh, I, well, I can only do this for 10 minutes and then I got to get yeah, going. Yeah. Right? It wasn't even a consideration. Right. None of it. So spontaneous, so fully in the moment. And I still remember feeling the blades of grass mm. through my shirt. Mm. You know, that, that visceral, sensual experience. And there's something about being connected to the ground yes. that's so wonderful, too. Right, yeah. You just almost feel like you're getting a big hug. Yes, <laughs> right. And, and more and more they're talking about the need for mm -hmm. skin on the ground, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. the earthing, the, the getting the earth's energy yeah. directly yeah, into our skin. Yeah, go barefoot. Probably not yes. now, but in the summer. You know. Maybe not here in Minnesota, <laughs> right? right? It's, it's cold out now. Yeah. So that's like just being that. But, but I realized, you know, like somehow through, I hate to blame the education system, but I feel like yeah. it was a lot there that I learned I needed to be productive. If I wanted to get ahead in life, mm -hmm. I needed to achieve. I needed to do. And you saw that in high school, that there was sort of a flip, you know, at a certain point. Maybe it's because, you know, we start talking about college. We yes. start talking about careers. We yeah. start talking about big choices in our life. Yeah. What are you going to you know, do with and, your and life? We, in, in, yeah. And so all of that other stuff is sort of childish and, yes. you know, nice, but we don't right. have time for that anymore. Right. But then we can get depleted. Right. Same thing if I'm on my phone all the time. I can drain my precious and here's the way I'm, I'm thinking about it lately. It's like my vital life force. Like this is precious energy. You know, I'm mm -hmm. at the age where I'm beginning to think about retirement and, mm -hmm. you know, what's left in this kind of later stage And in legacy. Life. What do you want to give yeah. to the next? How, and, what do you want to, you know, be able to make a contribution that yes, keeps going? Right. And is it just a sum of my accomplishments? Is it my curriculum vita, my resume? Mm -hmm. Or is it? Those m amazing, precious moments when I am reading a book to my great nieces and nephews. Mm -hmm. Wow. All right. That's a moment. That's yeah. precious connection. Right? Or having those conversations you had with the happiest people. Oh, my god! I see gosh. that that changed yes. your life in so many yes, ways. Yes, Lori Beth. That it wasn't just what you learned as the end result, but it was the process. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I was the happiest I had ever been in the midst of these conversations. And so the full title of my book is Full Heart Living, Conversations with the Happiest People I Know. I sat down and on videotape had a deep, meaningful conversation, a huge list of questions. I was so curious. 
because you know this came out of the unhappiest period of my adult life i had this horrible grief after losing my dream job i loved my job it was me my mm-hmm. identity i thought i was going to retire at this job and all of a sudden that's gone who am i mm-hmm. I, I was not clinically depressed, I wouldn't say, but I had symptoms. of It was grief. Sure. I was really sad. But I noticed these happy people, exceptionally happy, otherwise ordinary, but really happy people. All and you were curious. Yeah. I was curious. <laughs> so I sat down and asked them all these questions. And being in their presence alone is a mood boost. But then really, you know, uh, digging in mm-hmm. and really talking what makes you happy what is happiness what do you see that you do that maybe some other people don't do Mm -hmm. those kinds of things like really digging in Mm -hmm. there was like this reciprocity of energy and I just felt the mood in the room not just me because also there's a film crew there right (laughs) (laughs) exactly (laughs) and and the crew too you could feel them kind of leaning in Mm -hmm. yeah 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 and and you'll see this this is uh, you'll see samples of these on my website fullheartliving.com. You can see some of these moments. Yeah, and I have to believe that there were great insights of what made them happy, but in learning about conversation. And you as you said in the very beginning, you know, you want to promote to people, go have a conversation. Yes. I had a great conversation and this was life-changing yeah. and powerful. Yeah. But if you don't share some techniques and your techniques in terms of being a counselor, you know, being an actor, being in the moment. Yes. All of those things are things that you can help people to have yeah. similar conversations and to make their own discoveries. Right. That's what we want to do coming up, right? This is a segue. Yep, yep. To this the is next my segue. segue. Love we're, it. we're at the end of our segment one, but segment two, we're going to continue this conversation about what does it mean to have a conversation? We're going to be having some prompts. Uh, Tom's been doing that with me, so I'm excited. So stay tuned and we'll be right try back. This. Yeah. <laughs> Back in the age of kings, queens, and knights, there was one day per year when court jesters and other fools let loose, saying things they normally never would to the nobles. Until one day, the festival was banned. Now, the fools will reign once again as Interact Center for the Visual and Performing Arts brings the Feast of Fools to life at the Lab Theater in Minneapolis. Running from November 11th to December 9th, a cast of dozens brings to life this topsy-turvy tale set to a live score by a five-piece orchestra and led by acclaimed storyteller and NPR contributor Kevin Kling and directed by Jeannie Calvert. Saturday, November 11th is the opening night of Feast of Fools and will include a performance, a specially themed private party that includes culinary delights, wine and ales, entrancing music, and a silent auction of art from our own Interact artists. Come celebrate Interact with us. For more details and ticket information, visit us at interactcenter.org. See you there. Northeast Minneapolis is known for its creativity, and you'll know exactly why when you eat at Hazel's Northeast. Their creatively prepared comfort food will have you coming back week after week. Breakfasts like biscuits and gravy, granola pancakes, and brisket hash. For lunch, homemade soup, and one of the best Rubens in town. And don't miss the daily risotto or Chef Ali's ever-changing dinner specials. Come on in. Bring the whole family. Hazel's Northeast delivers real good food. Family owned at 29th and Johnson in Minneapolis. Looking for a great new read? Then stop in at Common Good Books on the corner of Grand and Snelling in St. Paul by the McAllister College campus. Their large and sunny location offers an expansive selection of titles with enough room to bring in your favorite authors and speakers from around the world. So stop by and visit the friendly folks at Common Good Books, 38 South Snelling in St. Paul. For more information and a list of upcoming events, visit them online at commongoodbooks.com. Don't wait. Get guaranteed Black Friday appliance savings through Monday at Warner Stellion. Buy at prices so low, I can't even say them on the radio. Go to your nearest Warner Stellion or to warnerstellion.com to see just how low we go on dishwashers, ranges, refrigerators, laundry pairs, kitchen suites, and more. Plus, you'll enjoy our free local appliance delivery by professionals you can trust. Guaranteed Black Friday savings are here, but just through Monday at Minnesota's original appliance specialist, Warner Stellion. I'm John Peterson of Ferndale Market, and I'm the third generation to grow turkeys on our family farm in Cannon Falls. We've grown them the same way since 1939, free range and without antibiotics. We're proud of the way our turkey tastes naturally, so we don't add a thing. Just 100% pure turkey. Reserve your free range Thanksgiving turkey today for pickup at our store right on the farm in scenic Cannon Falls or at one of our Metro retail partners. 
Visit us at FerndaleMarket.com for more information or to reserve your turkey today. Join the conversation. We're talking with Tom Glazer about his book, Full Heart Living. Tom, I'm so glad you're here today. Oh, it's great to be here. It's what it's like old times. It's like coming home. Yeah, Yeah, you got it. Yeah. So we've been talking about conversation and happiness. And does deeper communication support connections and a deeper sense of happiness? What I'd like to do is go back to your workbook. I want to promote the workbook. You can go to fullheartliving.com and download this workbook. I love it. I think there's some really good exercises in there. But one of the things that you do is you have exercises for the various chapters. And in the second chapter, you talk a lot about, you know, what are the key points of happiness? And I think those are those are good to kind of remind ourselves because ultimately, if we want to have a good conversation, it's about wanting to be happy. It's wanting to feel fulfilled mm-hmm. and connected. So one of the things that you put is, you know, happiness doesn't always mean smiling all the time. No. And I think people, you know, maybe relegate happiness to, you know, just happy face. And it's not. Mm-hmm. It, it has a lot deeper ramifications. It's that sense of fulfillment, I think. Well, and and this is why I chose the the, the, the title of the book as I did, Full Heart Living. Initially, I was the working title for a long time was choosing happiness because I thought it was and and not that and this is true. Mm -hmm. I was noticing happier people make choices, Mm. a lot of choices about what what they do and they don't do. And as I got deeper and deeper into it, I realized to the point you're just making, happiness is not always about having a smiley face. Right. It isn't. Happiness is embracing the fullness of life, the wholeness of life. Which, as we all know, we're not always happy as human beings. It's and, not, and allowing ourselves to experience it. Allowing ourselves and embracing all mm-hmm. of life. So, mm-hmm. so all of my subjects, all, all my interviewees, Lori Beth, talked about when they're sad, they're sad. If they're mad, they're mad. Uh, allowing the feeling to be there, really going with it, mm-hmm. following it, leads us somewhere. Uh, it's unhappy people who block those things. Mm. I don't want to feel anxious. I'm not going to feel anxious. So they stuff it. They try to avoid it. Maybe there's a reason we're anxious. There's a reason we're worried. If we can really go to it and go through it, it brings us somewhere that we need to be. This is what I find. And oh, I think you're, you're absolutely right. Yeah? I was telling you earlier, and it just strikes me again. Yeah. Sometimes my mother would admonish me about, well, keep it light. Let's just keep it light. And it's like, well, things aren't always light, Mom. No, no. <laughs> things can sometimes get dark. So well, thank it, you. She, she yeah. wanted you to find a husband, I imagine, yeah, Oh, yes. Right? Oh, yes. And, and keep was... everything light and mm-hmm. delightful. And... Then, you'll, then you'll attract the right Husband, exactly. Who will that was that was take care of you. yes, mm-hmm. yes. Mm-hmm. Don't get too heavy. Right. It's not. It's you know that that's yeah. just not attractive. Yeah. Just don't <laughs> talk about it, or just don't think about it. Those right. Are things I heard. Exactly. Growing exactly. up, it's, you like, can't not it's cognitive it. dissonance. Oh, right. No. Yes. You tell yes. me not to think about something. That's, that's exactly what I, really what I think like. about. Exactly. Yeah. Oh. Well, you've got some other good things here yeah. too. Um, happy people get down, but they don't stay stuck. Right. So they feel it. They allow themselves yes. to have the mm-hmm. moment, but they don't necessarily wallow. It's not and something that they just get stuck stuckness in. Stuckness comes when we try to avoid, actually. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Next thing is maintaining perspective is key. Happy oh, yeah. people avoid getting mired down in minutia. Yes. And they focus on what's truly important. Yeah. You can feel overwhelmed. There can be so many things coming at you. It, mm-hmm. it, it can feel like, how can I be happy when I've got all this coming at me all at once. Mm -hmm. But you've got a suggestion for that. Well, can we find happiness in the midst of sorrow? That's that's a quote from Gretchen, Mm -hmm. who's one of my subjects in the book. Can even in the midst of grief, Mm -hmm. can can I know there's joy somewhere, even if I'm not feeling it somewhere? Can I celebrate the fact that I have this body that Mm -hmm. can experience sorrow? Mm -hmm. That's just one Example. Well, I'm thinking about just the show that was before us where um, an artist from Puerto Rico yes. was feeling, you know, devastated. Yes. His family's there. They have no water. They're 70% without electricity. But he found a mechanism to say, I can do something yeah. and rallied people together yeah. 
to to believe in something bigger yeah. that he could be then able to bring down uh, water filters yeah. just to help change at least a part. Yes. And that gave him joy what can in the I midst do? of sadness. Yes. And what, it was getting to do something. Yes, yes, yes. So his uh, emotions led to this, what sounds like an amazing effort and a bunch of synchronicity. This is the piece that I mm-hmm. that I heard when I was driving in today. All of a sudden, people started showing up because he, he kind of opened. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. And then Put it on people, Facebook. Yeah. And then all of a sudden the UPS, you know, <laughs> shows up. And people donating water filters. Yeah. And uh, someone connecting in with someone else. Yeah. And it, it starts a, a beautiful, oh, happy connection. So cool. So uh, in terms of, you know, understanding these principles, you've come up with prompts. Yes. Tell me more about yes. the prompts. So... First of all, what I'm what I'm reminding people of is how to listen. I think that's a huge piece that for all of us, and I'm guilty of this as much as anybody else, right? We're listening to somebody else, and what goes on in our mind? What am I going to say next? Yeah, the internal monologue. <laughs> or the internal monologue. Everyone else is doing it, but we've got our storyline that mm-hmm. we're talking about inside our head as yeah. we observe. Your story reminds me of my story, right. and often we have really good ideas. Well, here's what you need to do, mm. right? We want to solve people's problems. Sometimes we have really good ideas, and sometimes it helps to share our own story. Sometimes, though... If we get in there too soon with our ideas or our own story, it blocks the other yeah. person from their flow. So I'm encouraging people to step back. You don't have to forget all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But let them ask if they want your idea. Or nice. say, hey, I have an idea. Mm-hmm. Would, would you like to hear my thought? They can say yes or no. If they say no, honor it. And that's a great conversation reminder. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's easy to want to be able to solve something and move on and so check it off the box. Exactly. But we don't always want to have it checked off the box. Right. Maybe we're we're in the process of just wanting to think about it. And so often people just want to be heard. Mm-hmm. I it, Just listen, validate. Right. And often if I get validated, my own brain clicks in and yeah. I come up with the, the solution that's right for me. Without being told. Without being told. And it's better, it's more authentic if I come up with it myself. Well, we prefer our own aha. Yeah, <laughs> yes. And it's better for our brains when it is our own epiphany. Mm, because it's integrated right and left, and, it, and the big aha comes out of both sides, being able to, yeah. to think it through. And we learn that we have the resource instead of needing yeah. to be told. Oh, that's a good else. point, too. It's in me. How do I uncover it mm-hmm. versus just, you know, come to somebody else for their authority? So finding my own authority. authority. Mm-hmm. And feeling how to express that with true authenticity. Yes. It's not something that you've heard or mm-hmm. it, it's something that you created in terms of processing it. Yes. So remembering to deeply listen Really be there, let go as much as you can of your own distractions and judgments. That's another one that comes up in our minds so often. You should have done this, or mm. you're stupid for doing that, or thinking that way. Yeah. These, this, this is part of being human, yep. no, noticing it, that this I, comes I, up. I call them my gremlins. Yes. And, and they can be helpful because they keep me safe, but when they keep me from connecting, then they're not doing me a good service. You got it. Well, we're coming down again to the end of this second segment, but in the next segment, you're going to work me through an exercise. You're going to prompt me, yep. so I'm yep. looking forward to it. Now, now so listen. S- oh, good. <laughs> and I'll, I'll feed back, so we'll see what this happens. So stay tuned. Come back. We'll, we'll have fun with prompting. <laughs> Stop. Pop quiz time. <laughs> what did you have for breakfast today? What are you having for dinner this evening? Chances are you can answer both of these questions. Unfortunately, there are nearly 200,000 children in Minnesota who can't. Hands and Feet was formed on the belief that children deserve better. We make custom inspiring apparel and donate 50% of our profits to programs which fight childhood hunger. Visit us at yourhandsandfeet.com and follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Your Hands and Feet to join the fight to end childhood hunger. Game on! Heating season will be blitzing us soon, so now's the time to schedule your annual furnace maintenance before the busy fall rush. Right now, save $50 off a furnace or air conditioner tune-up from Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. 
or double your savings when you schedule both your AC and furnace tune-ups at the same time. Call today to see for yourself why more than 475,000 Twin Cities residents have chosen Standard Heating. Online at standardheatingdeals.com, providing the comfort you deserve since 1930. Back in the age of kings, queens, and knights, there was one day per year when court jesters and other fools let loose, saying things they normally never would to the nobles. Until one day, the festival was banned. Now the fools will reign once again as Interact Center for the Visual and Performing Arts brings the Feast of Fools to life at the Lab Theater in Minneapolis. Running from November 11th to December 9th, a cast of dozens brings to life this topsy-turvy tale set to a live score by a five-piece orchestra and led by acclaimed storyteller and NPR contributor Kevin Kling and directed by Jeannie Calvert. Saturday, November 11th is the opening night of Feast of Fools and will include a performance, a specially themed private party that includes culinary delights, wine and ales, entrancing music, and a silent auction of art from our own Interact artists. Come celebrate Interact with us. For more details and ticket information, visit us at interactcenter.org. See you there. Connections Radio Show is all about tapping into our hardwired hunger to connect. We examine meaningful connections to ourselves, our community, and the world around us by opening the door to innovative insights by a wide variety of interesting guests. We'll make the connections to something bigger than ourselves. Join me, Lori Fitz, your host of Connections Radio Show. And together, we'll make the connections. Saturday mornings at 9 a.m. on AM 950, the progressive voice of Minnesota. Did you know that North America's largest LGBT and allied community chorus is based right here in Minnesota? One Voice Mixed Chorus is a dedicated, fun-loving group of singers who are building community and creating social change by raising our voices in song. We perform extensively in concert halls, schools, and on tour using artistic excellence to create a more understanding, loving, and just society. Find our busy concert calendar, how to audition, and learn more at onevoicemn.org. With your AM950 weather, I'm Hunter Haas. Today, mostly cloudy in the morning, highs in the upper 30s. Tonight, mostly cloudy, lows in the 20s. Sunday, cloudy, chance of rain, and highs in the mid 40s. The Museum of Russian Art presents Gifts and Prayers, the Romanovs and their subjects, on display at the museum through October 29th. You will find yourself imagining the lives by the Romanovs and the objects they held dear. The exhibition includes hundreds of items, many of which have never been seen on public display. That's the Museum of Russian Art in Minneapolis. Welcome back to your Connections Radio Show. I'm Lori Fitz, and today we're talking with Tom Glazier about his new book. Actually, it's it's still a new book. It's less than a year old in terms of rolling out. A little more than a year old, but it's still relatively new. I I like thinking of it as new. I like it as it, it, because I always get new insights every time. So it's a new book for me. And can I just say that harmonica? Oh, that's It's cool? so soulful. Yeah. It's passionate. It's perfect for what we're talking about. I think so. Yeah. I, 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 I'm one of those bluesy type gals. Uh-huh. I like the, the good soul bluesy music. Uh, that well, makes sense from what I know of you. <laughs> <laughs> you are a woman of soul. <laughs> I am. I like, I like that kind of stuff. And it, You know, it took a while. As some of you know, I've, I've done a couple different types of shows here. We started yeah. off. Um, Tom and I did the wake up call That's right. years ago yep. uh, about health and wellness, um, and then I continued. I did health connections, yep. but then I I stepped off and went. I want something even broader. I want to do connections and cover a whole big gamut. Yeah. Uh, but Tom and I have done a lot of good work together, it and it's dovetails great. Dovetails so well with my. Work, which is yeah. about connecting with yes. ourselves and other people and our passions. Well, it's... we talked about when we were developing, yes. you know, the health connection. So what do we mean by connections? Yeah. And, and what does that look like? Right. And... So we're going to connect here, huh? Oh, yeah. Now, <laughs> now as I mentioned. I'm, I'm ahead of you. Uh, no, 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 no. It's all good. As I mentioned in our last segment, uh, we were talking about happiness. We're talking about um how good conversation creates happiness, but you also discovered that sometimes people need some instructions, yep. Give, yep. give some ideas of, you know, some skills that you can work on yeah. with your conversation to yeah. make it more meaningful. So I agreed that uh-huh. uh, we would do an exercise. I have yep. no idea. Uh-huh. There's been no uh, pre-work for me. This Promise. Is, this is all mm-hmm. in the moment uh, that Tom would do some prompts with me yep. to help me with my conversation. So I'm going to I'm going to let Tom take over the show now. 
I'm going to practice the listening stuff we were talking about in the last segment. So I'm, I'm just going to listen. And, and I'm going to give you 60 uninterrupted seconds to talk about this prompt. Okay. 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 I'm ready. I'll time you. Talk about a time you felt the most alive and why. Well, uh, I can say that I always feel most alive when I'm around my horses. There's something that's very grounding. Um, I get out of my head. I no longer have the internal monologue. The horses will make me get out of my head. They they want to be full center, um, and they want to be the the one I'm paying attention to. And even if I'm just going out to feed them, there's something about their magnificent charm and style and beauty and and how they react to the world. I love hearing them eat their food. It's I call it scrumptious. There's something about it, the way they take it in and they're appreciating that moment and how they nicker at me and how we feel you know, connected, that yes. that they are a part of me and they rely on me, of course, for the food and the love. But I am most happy when I'm on that horseback and I'm going on a trail and I'm around the trees and we've got this beautiful trail out where I live called oh, the Loose Oh, that's 60 line. seconds. Ah, there we are. That's... Wow, Laurie Beth. So, okay, what I'm going to do now, so I listened really deeply. You, you've, you've followed the prompt. I'm going to feed back to you what I heard as the main elements or the, what's like what's the essence of sure. what I heard and what's important to you or what your value is. So to me, and th- let me just quick say, it's important that I own this. So that's why I'm using that as the preface. To me, this is a story about reciprocity. So I'm not telling you that's what your story is about, but it's what I heard through my filter. What I heard is this back and forth. The, the horses get from you but they give so much back to you. Absolutely. And it's a, a was a story about connection. You even used that word. Mm. You're so connected to yourself in these moments. And you're connected to these magnificent, I think that's a word you used, beings. And all of these elements are your values. You value... Um, well, and, and it fits with what we were talking about with the harmonica. You value... Um, uh, passion, you value sensuality, you, you listen, you, vent- you, you value um, uh, the senses. You good food. To- good food, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Scrumptious <laughs> food. <laughs> Scrumptious <laughs> food. <laughs> so that's a mini example of what I am teaching people is how to listen, what to listen for, and then wh- something to talk about specifically. So this is what we're talking about is how to have deeper conversations, and I, just in a nutshell. I have to tell you, in having you reflect back yeah. what I said, there's like this little joy that that beams up. He heard me, oh. and he took it to a place that I didn't even think about, yes. reciprocity. Yes. I would have never named no. what I want and no. do and feel around the horses as reciprocity, but when you say that... I have my aha. Yes. Well, yeah. 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 We, yeah. We, we, we give each other joy. Yes. And, and yes. then you recognizing that and yes. saying it out loud yes. gives me a sense of I am seen, I am heard, yes. I am appreciated, yes. and I, I have something to offer. Yes. Okay. And then to keep going with this flow, you talked about how you felt a spark of joy. Yeah. And you saw my face light up. Because then I feel joy hearing about your joy, right? So we're doing reciprocity right oh, here. Oh, good. Good, good, right? good. Right? And it, it just it compounds. Like the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Because now I feel, wow, this worked. Even in just this kind of quick, a little bit silly example, mm-hmm. it, this is exactly what we're talking about. Connecting more deeply with ourselves. And this is what I learned mm-hmm. in this whole project, Lori Beth. The happier people connect more deeply with themselves they connect more deeply with others, and they connect with their passions, particularly if they find a way to offer all this in the service of others. That's the holy grail. Mm-hmm. But even just those first three, when we connect more deeply with ourselves, and just in two minutes, we did this exercise. Absolutely. You're saying it helped you connect more deeply. And I was more connected to you, too, because I was really listening. But part of it was how you set the conversation up to give me something that I would feel very comfortable 
to talk about and open up. And I think there's a skill to that, being able to see or or sense into what might be a good conversation for this person to share with me that yeah. I could learn from. Yeah, yes. And that's that's something. Do you have some suggestions to have people think about what are what are good questions? This is what I'm working on, and I'm developing a whole list of this kind of prompt. Mm -hmm. What I have so far is, uh, and I'm just kind of scrambling to look. There it is. Um, Eventually, I'm going to have a whole list of this kind of prompt on my website that people can access for free. Mm-hmm. Um, and eventually, I want to develop an actual like a, a product, like a little gift box mm-hmm. with these kinds of prompts in it. So like you reach into a box, you pull out you know, a little card at random, mm-hmm. and it tells you a prompt. Wouldn't that be a wonderful thing for the dinner table? You know, just to be able to have some conversation prompts that makes it fun for a family to start sharing together about things that are meaningful. This summer, our son was home from college. Mm -hmm. We started to play with this exact thing because I want. Of course, you got to do it yourself in in development. So yeah, so exactly what you're saying. After dinner, right? Quick, clear the dishes, and we would all pull out one prompt. And talk about it. And and it was so wonderful. Now, often after dinner, when we have dinner as a family, we'll play a game, sure. which is great, too. Really, often Rummy Cube, by the way. I love this. <laughs> it's a great game. I'm the worst at it. I, I, I get, you know, I'm. <laughs> if I win, everybody's like, wow, <laughs> you won that. Good job, Tom. But other times, and, and that's a way to connect, too. Nothing mm-hmm. wrong with that. When we do this, there's something so special about it. And do you have in the prompts that here's the person that shares, but then part of the exercise is really feeding back what the person has heard? Yes, that's a that's a key component. Mm-hmm. Yes, because of what you experienced just now, how you felt so validated, you yes. felt heard. And not only that, somehow I had a different word for it than you. Absolutely. And that helped you realize a whole other component that maybe – wouldn't have. I, I don't think I would have. And now the rest of the day I'll be thinking about reciprocity. <laughs> what does that mean? Hmm. How do I live that? I do. I do live that. I love that. <laughs> so, and, and that's the nice thing also about a good conversation is even if you're not in conversation at that moment, it stays with you. All of those thoughts, it's some of the things that I think make a good conversation is how you can reflect back on, oh, yeah, and when he said that, it really hit home. Yes. And then you go back and, and you you do start seeing the world differently. You get to another mm-hmm. point of being able to, mm-hmm. you know, I'll probably look at my horses and go, reciprocity, yeah. kids. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. And now you'll realize more uh-huh. explicitly in mm-hmm. the moment, wow, mm-hmm. we are giving and receiving these mm-hmm. magnificent mm-hmm. beings mm-hmm. in this moment, mm-hmm. which will help uh, um, help you appreciate it. Yeah. Or Even Yes, more. because it's that moment. I remember in our town uh, when Emily has passed and she comes back and she wants to relive her 12th birthday. Well, she wants to hug, you know, the butternut tree. And, mm-hmm. you know, she wants to live every moment. She mm-hmm. asks, you know, do we? does anyone ever live every moment and really yes. appreciate every oh, moment? And we can miss out on so much. Mm-hmm. Yes. Just taking that time. Yes. And the other thing I loved about what I just heard is how it isn't, limited to the conversation itself, you said, you'll take this with you. Mm -hmm. I think a good conversation stays with you a long time. Yeah, you're right. And then then I think it gets into gratitude then too, because Mm. then you start to feel uh, very grateful for that conversation. And when you can start acknowledging the conversations and what really was special in a conversation, I think that adds to the joy too. Yes. Because I think gratitude brings happiness. That that one of the keys is when you can truly be grateful. Even that quote that you shared earlier, that if you can find joy, even when you're feeling a lot of pain, if yes. you can find gratitude yes. Yes. and you can share gratitude. And I think gratitude's a great thing to be a prompt in a conversation. Oh, it's huge. What do you feel grateful for? Yes, that is one of my prompts. Mm-hmm. Makes yes, good sense. perfect. Mm-hmm. Perfect. <laughs> and gratitude is huge in happiness, by the way. It, you know, they tell you to uh, promote your book to come up with just three points because memory and that's all people can uh-huh. take. But if I had to bring a fourth, and I, I already made my three into four by, by adding <laughs> okay, okay. the You're the a rebel. To, You're right, a rebel. Absolutely, you know. <laughs> so five, I guess, technically, would be gratitude. So you're absolutely right. Happier people appreciate 
actively in many, many ways, whether it's through like formal prayer mm -hmm. before a, a meal mm -hmm. or maybe giving grace. Yes. 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 Or maybe a silent thanks before taking a sip of my tea. Absolutely. Well, you also in your book, you, you have a good chapter on gratitude that I, I love. There, there's a gratitude meditation that I highly recommend. And think about in your conversations, you, you suggest uh, some things, for, four questions uh, near at the end of each day. You can ask yourself, um, what touched me today? Who and what inspired me today? What made me smile? What's the best thing that happened? And I think all of those are good questions that you can ask someone else too. Absolutely. Ask yourself and then share and go back and forth and make those discoveries. I'm going to add those to my list. Thank good, you good, for good, that. Good, good, good. So we're prompt from you. Good, good, good. <laughs> well, we're at the end of this one, but we're going to have one more segment and talk a little bit about our passions too, how that can open up conversation. Uh, I hit on one of my passions today pretty sure quick. <laughs> but stay tuned with us. We'll be right back. We'll be talking about connecting and good conversation. Here with Tom Glazier, author of Full Heart Living. Back in the age of kings, queens, and knights, there was one day per year when court jesters and other fools let loose, saying things they normally never would to the nobles. Until one day, the festival was banned. Now the fools will reign once again as Interact Center for the Visual and Performing Arts brings the Feast of Fools to life at the Lab Theater in Minneapolis. Running from November 11th to December 9th, a cast of dozens brings to life this topsy-turvy tale set to a live score by a five-piece orchestra and led by acclaimed storyteller and NPR contributor Kevin Kling and directed by Jeannie Calvert. Saturday, November 11th is the opening night of Feast of Fools and will include a performance, a specially themed private party that includes culinary delights, wine and ales, entrancing music, and a silent auction of art from our own Interact artists. Come celebrate Interact with us. For more details and ticket information, visit us at interactcenter.org. See you there. Connections Radio Show is all about tapping into our hardwired hunger to connect. We examine meaningful connections to ourselves, our community, and the world around us by opening the door to innovative insights by a wide variety of interesting guests. We'll make the connections to something bigger than ourselves. Join me, Lori Fitz, your host of Connections Radio Show. And together, we'll make the connections. Saturday mornings at 9 a.m. on AM 950, the progressive voice of Minnesota. It's a good day to be indigenous. Native Earths Radio presents I'm Awake. Our weekly Native American talk radio show will discuss national and local Native American news and events. Local and national guests will help us keep current with Mother Earth, tribal, and Twin City issues. Native American issues are human issues. We invite all people to walk hand in hand with our struggles, victories, and achievements. Listen Saturdays at 2 p.m. I am awake. If you use a wood stove or fireplace, remember these three tips. First, burn only dry seasoned wood and maintain a hot fire. Second, have a certified professional inspect and maintain your wood stove or fireplace annually. And third, upgrade to an efficient, EPA-approved wood stove or fireplace insert. Remember, burn wise, burn the right wood, the right way, in the right wood-burning appliance. Visit epa.gov slash burnwise. Brought to you by the U.S. EPA and AM 950. Our journey of hands and feet started when I learned about a four-year-old boy in my class who'd been going without lunch for the first three months of the school year. The fact is, he's one of nearly 200,000 children in Minnesota who face hunger on a daily basis. Hands and Feet was formed on the belief that children deserve better. We make custom, inspiring apparel and donate 50% of our profits to programs which fight childhood hunger. Visit us at yourhandsandfeet.com and follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Your Hands and Feet to join the fight to end childhood hunger. back to Connections Radio. I'm hearing the music and I'm hearing it in a different way this time <laughs> after our last segment. Yeah, it's kind of soulful. It has lots of reciprocity in it. Yeah. <laughs> if you missed yeah. the last segment, you can listen to our podcast and you can hear why we're talking about reciprocity <laughs> and soul music. But yeah, this is uh, this is good, good music and good conversation. And that makes for a good day. We have Tom Glazer, 
who has written Full Heart Living. And from there, he's been exploring how to coach and support people in terms of having good conversations. His conversations with those amazing people gave him a sense of happiness, but it also gave him a sense that there was something in the process of talking with people, having yeah. real conversation. That was also something he wanted to share with the world. You got it. Thank you for being here. Oh, my gosh. What a pleasure. So good. Well, I want to make sure that folks know a couple things. Um, I want you to know that you can buy this book, Full Heart Living. You can go to fullheartliving.com, yep. and you can buy it there, mm-hmm. or you can go to Amazon. Amazon.com, barnesandnoble.com. All good places. Yep. Even some local retailers, all of which are listed on my website, and even a couple non-local. You've also got a... a Five plus five double nickel giveaway. Tell me about that. We're reaching the end of my mu- my birthday month. My 55th birthday was in the middle of this month. Congratulations. And so, thank you. I remember when you turned 50. I can't believe that was five years ago. <laughs> and I write about that 50th birthday you? party in yeah, the book. Yeah. Yes. Um, so we're giving uh, away 10 books, five plus five, on goodreads.com, signed copies of my book. I'll personally mail you a copy of my book if you win. So go to goodreads.com you to al- enter. You also have got some things going on um, with community education. Tell me about yes, that. Yes, and uh, senior centers, I'm doing an expanded version of what you and I are talking about here uh, based on my book, all the concepts in my book, particularly around having these conversations. And so we actually try out this exact prompt Good. in my classes. It'll work. <laughs> It'll work. It's fun. It's yeah, fun. Yeah, I loved it, yes. Um, and uh, so th- let's see. The next one is December. No, 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 no. December 7th. There it is at Edina Senior Center. Uh, I'm doing another one. Again, back there. They love me so much at Edina S- Senior Center in May. May 10, I'll be back there. And um, also at St. Louis Park. Uh, community ed in February, and all this stuff is listed on my website. And then we also have Christmas Eve at Fair Trade Books in Red Wing. How cool will that be? Really cool. Again, <laughs> I was there last year. Again, it was so much fun. I'm spending Christmas Eve again at Fair Trade Books in Red Wing from noon to three. Or actually, I think it's going to be eleven to two. We got to confirm the time. And in the spring, I'm hoping to do a, a South Minneapolis little library tour. So you know the little libraries, the yeah. little free libraries. I love those. Yeah. Yes, I do too. So I want to donate copies of my book. Nice. And do readings of children's books to any kids along the way. And so that's I'm, I'm planning that. That's my idea. So well, far. we'll put that on um, our website, Great. Fitz uh, radiocom and we'll we'll. Keep that on our event page to make sure that that folks know so you can go there too. Now, if folks are interested and they want you to come speak after having this fun experience of listening on this show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. um, They can get a hold of your publicist. So I want to make sure that I get uh, Rachel M. Anderson's name out there. Uh, She is your publicist. Mm -hmm. She can set up an event Mm -hmm. or if you, you know want to have a, a new story or you want to get to know Tom mm-hmm. and, and do an interview, you can contact Rachel M. Anderson. She is the publicist. Her number is 952-240-2513. I'm going to give that number again, 952-240-2513. And her uh, email address is rachel at rmapublicity.com. So that's rmapublicity.com. That's right. And I've got my new blog, which you mentioned earlier, the first entry you were uh, referring to. That's going to be about monthly. Folks can sign up for that on my website. Um, And that first blog, just for folks, if you've missed it, it was so lovely. It's really about the difference between being and doing. And I do think that we get caught up in so much doing that it's a good reminder that being uh, is really what gives us joy. And we, we need it to fuel our doing, yes. too. We have yep. to have that. And our creativity. We right. have to have the downtime to be at our most creative. Well, and you, were, you and I were talking a little bit about that. You know, sometimes it's hard when you're physically exhausted. Oh, that's right. Yes. You're self-care. spent. And having a conversation is just overwhelming. Yeah. And one thing that I'm really excited about yeah. is you not only um, promote getting good exercise mm-hmm. and balance in your life. Yeah. You've got some cool recipes that are going to be coming up. Yes. I, and I tried one. And yeah, yeah. Excellent. I brought you a sample. And I've got to have that recipe. These, these peanut butter balls, which are so tasty and super nutritious. And uh, 
I've, I've just started video blogging, and this winter I'll be doing recipes on my video oh, blog. I'm so excited. I love up. Like, like, like these peanut butter balls, which are... I that's uh, my new obsession. They're it's, heavenly. They're heavenly, and yes, ambrosia. And it's the only that the only downside is that you want more. <laughs> it's, they're hard to stop eating. They've got honey and peanut butter and all sorts Chia of other good and stuff. Hemp and cinnamon oh, and yum. cocoa powder. Yum, yum, yum. And, oh, coconut oil. It's great. Well, you know, I, oh. I I do think that making the decision to live a healthy life and what yeah. does that mean yes. and what does it mean for our health contributes ideally, to feeling more empowered and more connected to others because yes. you're feeling good about yourself. It's not sufficient, but it is essential. There you go. Foundation. That's how Henry Emmons puts it, who's one of the subjects in my book. He's the, uh, the local psychiatrist and author nice. of The Chemistry of Joy. Terrific. Yeah. Well, again, if I want to make sure that folks know to go to fullheartliving.com, all kinds of good stuff there. But as part of our ending of our conversation today, we only have a couple minutes left, um, I want to encourage folks to think about taking a risk. When we have these conversations, we're allowing ourselves to be vulnerable. That's right. And that can be kind of scary. Yes. But the rewards, even if you make a mistake, let's say you have a conversation Mm -hmm. that didn't go quite the way you thought it was going to, Mm -hmm. you at least feel good about trying to get out there and make a conversation. Two things. One is that, that we reward ourselves for the effort, Mm -hmm. not the outcome. Good, good point. Yes, yes. Number two is not just taking risks blindly. We don't just, you know, dive off the diving board. We take lessons. How do we dive off a a dive? We learn how to do it. That's what I call supporting ourselves. So what do I need to do to support myself to take a risk? And you were saying that some of the prompts, you know, are great for conversation, but if you're not ready for that conversation, write it down. Yes, these can be writing prompts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, which, it's essential to connect with ourselves also. And when we connect with ourselves and we explore a variety of ideas, we bring something then to the conversation. Yes. We bring our opinion, our ideas, something yes. that we've sorted through. And I think there's texture to that. Yes. And and people are intrigued with, you know, when you've reasoned something through and, and why. Yes. Be able to share that. Right, exactly. Celebrate that. Yeah, yeah, nothing wrong with that. Celebrate with friends, with coworkers, with the significant others in your life. Mm-hmm. Um, the How are you check sharing? Check out person at the grocery store. Yeah. <laughs> you can have even a short conversation oh. that just makes you feel like so often I think that the register person or the person mm-hmm. that in a toll booth, you know, they don't get treated, you know, exactly. with the dignity. So how can we treat everyone with dignity and support good conversation? Yes. Well, it's been a great conversation yes, today. Yes, it has. Thank you, Marika. Thank you, Tom, for being here. And thank you for being part of the conversation. And go out and take a look at Tom's book and make sure you go to his website, Full Heart Living, and look at the workbook and the meditations. That'll get you started. So your first step to do something, check it out. Get inspired and maybe do something more. Looking forward to having you next week too. Take care. Have a great week.